like Daniel, just like Shadrach, Meshach, or Bendigo, he'll do it. Just take a look, go ahead, at where you are now, and where you be always come through, <laughs> for you, he's the same God now that he was there, oh, he don't ever change, you may not know how, you may not know when, but he'll do it again. Jesus, beloved, praise Jesus. Jesus loves you today, and I come to you in the name of Jesus the Christ, who was declared in Jeremiah, the 10th chapter and the 10th verse, as the true and the living God and an everlasting King. Amen. Amen. I have good news for you today. Amen. Jesus is concerned about you. Amen. Jesus is concerned about your life, and he would like to intervene to help you to bring change. Amen. To your circumstances. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, the fourth chapter, the 23rd verse, it says, Jesus went about teaching, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and disease among the people. Amen. Jesus went about healing all manner of sickness and disease among the people. Now, sickness is broad. As you highlight that word, sickness is not just physical sickness. It could be any sickness in finances, in relationships, on the job. Amen. The, dev the Bible says the devil comes to but for to steal, kill, and destroy in the book of John 10.10. 10. Listen, Jesus says in the book of Mark, the ninth chapter, the 23rd verse, that he's going to give you a miracle if you can believe. Jesus says, if you can believe, then all things are possible to him that believe it. Amen. Now, a miracle is defined as an extraordinary event manifesting by way of divine intervention in human affairs. Jesus wants to enter your circumstance and bring change. Amen. He wants to heal your situation, whether it's your body, finances, whatever you need a miracle in. Amen. Legal issue, business, amen. Whatever it may be, Jesus is here for you. You're blessed today, amen, because he created this, this program with you in mind, amen. It's for you, amen, that Jesus wants to move in your circumstance. Amen. Call a friend, call a neighbor, and let them know that the expected miracle telecast is on the air. Amen. And give them an opportunity to believe Jesus Christ to change their circumstance. Amen. Amen. To give them a change of story. Amen. Praise Jesus. The Lord has a promise for you today. If you come to him today, the Bible lets us know. In the book of Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, in the, first, in the fifth verse, that Christ was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Amen. Jesus Christ, the Bible says in the book of John, the third chapter, in the 16th verse, that God gave him. He died willingly, amen, on the cross for our sins because the Lord God loved us just that much. Amen. And Jesus promised to you today, amen, if you come to him, separate from the miracle, that platform he created for you, because Jesus wants you to prove him, amen. He wants you to prove him, even as it says in the book of Malachi, the third chapter, amen. Jesus says, prove me now, amen. And he wants you to prove him. Prove means he wants you to test the truth or validity of who he is, amen. He will prove himself to you. As you believe, amen. As he says in the book of Mark, the ninth chapter, the 23rd verse, and it's Jesus Christ speaking. He says, Jesus says unto you, 
If you can believe, then all things are possible to you that believe. Now, your promise today, beloved, amen. If you come to Jesus Christ today, amen. It's found in the book of Matthew, the 16th chapter and the 18th verse. Amen. And that scripture says, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Now, upon this rock, Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter, the 4th verse, Jesus is the rock. He is the rock. Amen. Now, rock is defined in Webster Dictionary. One of those definitions is foundation. Amen. Jesus Christ, upon this rock I will build my church. Jesus Christ is the foundation of the church. Amen. Upon any home you must build, or any building that's built, amen, in the world today, you must have a foundation. Amen. So that you can build a home upon that foundation. The church is built upon the foundation of Jesus Christ. Death, burial, resurrection. Amen. Now, your promise as you come to him, amen. He says in, uh, I will build my church. Acts, the book of Acts, the second chapter and the 47th verse, it says, And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ wants you to become a part of his family. Amen. He died for you. He loves you. Amen. And he wants you to become, belong to him. Amen. The Bible mentions in the book of Matthew, the 25th chapter and the 46th verse, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. There's life after this, after this life. And Jesus wants you to spend that life after with him, and he wants to help move you forward in instances where the enemy, according to John 10, 10, came to steal, kill, and destroy to stop, block, put roadblocks, obstacles, hindrances in your path. He wants to help to remove those things out of your life. Amen. So, the Bible says in Acts, the second chapter and the 47th verse, that the Lord added to his church daily as such as should be saved. Amen. Now, Acts, the 16th chapter and the 5th verse says, And so were the churches established in the faith. Amen. Jesus Christ, amen, wants to establish you in the faith. And that begins by receiving him as your Lord and your Savior. Savior. The Bible says in the book of Romans, the 10th chapter and the 9th verse, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in your heart that Christ raised him from the grave, then you shall be saved. Amen. You shall be saved. Now, 1 Corinthians, the 3rd chapter and the 9th verse says, you are God's building. So, Jesus Christ, the church is built upon Jesus Christ, the rock. He is the foundation of the church. He says, I will build my church. Amen. Jesus wants you to belong to him, to be a part of his family, to become a Christian. Amen. Praise Jesus. And he wants to move in your life, amen, because he has a plan and a purpose for you that you know not of. Or if you are aware, amen, he wants to, if you are aware of a purpose that you have in life, he wants to help you get to a certain place, amen, in life, which is far greater than where you think on your own that you want to go. Amen. Praise Jesus. Now, you are the building. When you receive Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior, and we're in that season now, amen, where the entire world is going to celebrate on April the 19th, 2019, amen. It's the day, amen, celebrated, amen, where Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins of the world, amen. And on that Sunday, the 21st of this month, it's called Resurrection Sunday all over the world, Easter, amen, which is, it, it is proclaimed by many that we will be celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What a time for you to come, amen, to him, amen, and become a part of his church. And your promise as you do that, he says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. That means whatever goes on in your life, 
When you become a part of Jesus Christ, amen, family of the church, he said the gates of hell will not prevail against you. Now, the gates are defined as pathways, an opening, amen, a means of entrance or exit, amen. So there are gates, and hell is defined as a place or state of misery by Webster tor torment or wickedness, amen. Hell is also defined as a realm of the devil and the demons in which condemned people suffer everlasting punishment. Listen, before I go further, the Lord is saying to you, when you come to me, you become a part of my church, you become a Christian, the gates of hell won't prevail against you. Now, prevail means, amen, there's an opening and an entrance. Amen. Prevail means, is defined as to be effective, Amen. To be effective. So the gates of hell will not be effective against you. Amen. As you come to Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, prevail also means to become effective. So that means even in the future, the gates of hell will not become effective against you. They will not prevail. Amen. Against you as you come to Jesus Christ. So hell will not prevail. Prevail also is defined by what as to conquer. So Jesus is saying the gates of hell will not prevail against you. Hell's gates, amen, where demons, devils, amen, spirits, they will not prevail against your church. They will not conquer you. Conquer means to gain or acquire by force of arms, amen. So hell will not conquer you in any area of your life. As you come to Jesus today, that is your promise, amen, beloved. As you come to him, amen, the gates of hell will not, you will not be overcome, amen. They will not gain in your life. They will not acquire your life once you come to Jesus. The gates of hell, what's in hell. There are many gates, amen. Gates is more than one, amen. So that means there's an entrance and an exit from hell, amen, that is in the earth. But it will not prevail against the church that's founded upon the rock of Jesus Christ. Amen. So hell will not acquire or master. Conquer also means to gain mastery over. Hell will not gain mastery over your life as you come to Jesus Christ. That's his promise to you today. Amen. He's going to give you a miracle. He's going to move. That's what he does. That's how he shows his love. He moves by his power in your life. Amen. To bring change. That's, he's going to give that to you. It blows my mind every time I think of it, how he loves you so much to do that for you. But then he's promising you, beloved, that, hey, as you come to me, you're going to be built upon the rock. You become my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against you. Amen. Prevail also means to triumph, a victory, a conquest by military force. Jesus is saying, when you come to me and become a part of the church, amen, the gates of hell will not triumph over you. They, it will not be vic there will not be victory for the gates of hell over your life. They will not conquest over you, amen, by any force, by military force. To win, to prevail also means to win. So Jesus is saying the gates of hell will not win against you. That means win is defined by Western to get possession of. The gates of hell will not get possession of you as you come to Christ because you are founded upon the rock and you are part of his church. Now, I'm going to give you an opportunity to come to Jesus today. Amen. Because, see, the church, that's the, in 1 Corinthians 3, 9, you are his building. The church is more than just a building with four walls. You become the church. You are his building. How is that? Because when you receive Jesus into your heart and he comes in, he's going to dwell within your temple, your building, your body. Amen. Will you come today? The gates of hell will not prevail. Amen. Against his church. I'll be more than honored to lead you to him. It's a simple prayer of faith that you repeat after me. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, just say that, Lord Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins. Become my Lord and Savior. I believe you died on the cross. You rose the third day. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Get ready. Congratulations. You belong to Jesus today. Amen. Get, amen, 
involved with Jesus, the things of Christ. Get into the word of God, amen, and allow him, amen, to speak to you, to move for you, amen. And remember, you belong to Christ. You are his church. You're founded upon the rock. The gates of hell will not prevail against you. I love you. Be right back. Oh, he's still Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, he'll do it again. Oh, he'll do it again. <laughs> if you'll just take a look, go ahead, at where you are now and where you be. always come through <laughs> for you. He's the same God now that he was there. He don't ever change You may not know how You may not know when But he'll do it again Hallelujah You may not know how Oh, you may not You may not know when Oh, you may not know how And you may not know when. But my God. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus, beloved. Amen. The prophetic focus for the week, amen, is found in the book of Numbers, the 32nd chapter and the 24th, 24th verse. And it reads, Build you cities for your little ones and foes for your sheep, and do that which proceeded out of your mouth. Amen. The prophetic word, the prophetic focus this week, my brother and my sister, is rise up and build the vision of the kingdom of God that the Lord Jesus Christ has put in your heart. Amen. It is time to build. Amen. For the kingdom of God. It is time to birth the vision that the Lord Jesus Christ has given you. Amen. Amen. That will be a legacy for the kingdom of God and that it will bring increase to your family, your community, and the body of Christ. Amen. Now, increase is something that is added. It is defined by Webster as something that is added, that enriches. Amen. That it makes greater. Amen. It enlarges in capacity and will ultimately be a part of the legacy that you are to leave in the earth. I'm talking about what Jesus Christ right now in this season, amen, wants to do and wants you to do, amen. In the, if you're in the will of God, amen. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Now, the scripture says, build you cities for the little ones, amen. The vision you birthed out to build may be a ministry, uh, some type of, it could be a bookstore, it could be any type of, of store, amen, clothing store, I don't know, restaurant, whatever the vision it, that Jesus Christ has given you, it is time to birth it out, to build for the kingdom of God, to, to create a legacy, amen, in the earth. Now, when you think about building a city, city, cities has restaurants, they have stores, they have ministries, uh, TV programs, radio programs, businesses. Listen, it is time, amen, for you to build. Whatever Jesus Christ has put in your heart, this is the birthing season. Amen. Amen. To begin to build your legacy for the kingdom, amen, that will pass on, amen, to the bloodline, that will increase the community. That's right. Amen. 
Jesus is global. He's, his vision is huge. And, and you, my brother and sister, you are aware of that. Amen. But God is saying it's the birthing season. Amen. It is time to build for the kingdom. It is time to birth. For those of you, God has given visions. It is time to birth. Now, as you step out on the vision that Jesus has given you, he's going to impart revelation, amen, of how that process will go. Amen. He will bring you the provision. Amen. Praise Jesus. Now, the Bible says in the book of Genesis, the 45th chapter and the 21st verse, and the children of Israel did so, and Joseph gave them wagons according to the commandment of Pharaoh and gave them provision for the way. Amen. Now, your Pharaoh, that one that tried to block you, stop you, hinder you, amen, hold you hostage, amen, my brother and my sister with the pitfalls, the roadblocks, the snares and the traps, amen, the Lord is going to command them to be a vehicle of helping you build and providing provision along the way. That's right. You heard it right straight from the throne of Christ. Amen. That Pharaoh is going to help you build. Amen. And God, Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus, is going to give you revelation. Now, I have to. Let's see what's going on there. Amen. Now, provision is defined as the act or process of providing. It's also defined by Webster as a stock of needed materials or supplies. So your Pharaoh, my brother and sister, is going to play a role in providing for you needed materials or supplies to build your vision. Amen. And to build your legacy. Now, Numbers, the 32nd chapter and the 24th verse goes on to say, and do that which proceeded out of your mouth. Now, Joshua, the book of Joshua the first chapter and the eighth verse, that eight clause, it says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Amen. He's talking about the word. So, you should be saying what Jesus told you from his word. Whether it was a logos word that came a written word from the uh, Bible, or if it was a prophetic word spoken, which is a spoken word over your life, amen. And the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, wants you to begin to build, and that Pharaoh is going to assist you, amen. That's what your prophetic focus for the week now. You have spoken, you have been speaking the word, my brother and sister, many times what the Lord Jesus has for you and want you to do. So, Enter now into your birthing season. Amen. And begin to build. For surely, Jesus told me to tell you this. Surely, Jesus shall make your way prosperous. You shall have good success. And your Pharaoh is going to help you build. Amen. By providing provision. That's right. And remember... Amen. The Lord Jesus is going to impart revelation, amen, to you, amen, for you to begin, amen, to build the kingdom of God. So as you step out and you begin to birth out, build what the Lord Jesus Christ has given you, revelation is going to come as you walk into what he's telling you to do. More revelation than what he's given you for the vision. And as you walk out, you rest assured, amen, that Numbers 32, 24 is your portion, amen, and that Genesis 45, 21, your Pharaoh is going to assist you, amen. The same one that tried to hold you back, stop you, block you, hinder you, created all kind of pitfalls, snares, and traps, He's gone. That Pharaoh is going to provide provision, my brother and my sister. Now, that is your prophetic focus for the week. And at this time, amen, let us, amen, bring your mind in, amen. Jesus Christ is going to move, amen, for that one that is believing, amen. You have to believe, 
Amen. And Jesus is well able, amen, to do that for you. He's willing, amen, to give you a miracle, to step into your circumstance and bring change. Amen. Now, let us pray. Jesus, touch the people now. Be glorified, Jesus, by everyone with faith believing. Give them their miracle. In your holy name I pray. Amen. It's done, beloved. Amen. Watch how Jesus Christ moves for you. He loves you today, and so do I. Oh, he's still God. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, he'll do it again. Oh, he'll do it again. <laughs> if you'll just take a look, go ahead. And where you are now, and where you he always come through. <laughs> For you, he's the same God now that he was there. He don't ever change. You may not know how. You may not know when. But he'll do it again. Hallelujah. You may not know how. Ah, oh, you may not. You may not. But my God, <laughs> say my God, he's going to do it. Oh.